So taking a deep dive into some of my collection, most of these are kind of like, they're special to me. Uh, some of these I've had for a really long time. Some of these, you know, were from back when I first started playing. Others were discs that were returned from a long ways, but most of them have, are actually stuff that have kind of inspired me, especially this year with how I've kind of, you know, changed sponsors and gone into this new realm uh, of working with Infinite and Thought Space and Clash and so many other amazing companies. It's just awesome. So first on the list is definitely the oldest disc. This is a DX Polecat that I have had since 2004. And the moment I had an open bag, I remember going out with Tina and messing around with this disc. It still flies great, but I'm also super scared that I'm gonna, it's gonna die. So I'm cherishing it, it just sits, sits on my disc rack and just looks good. So definitely super cool. This was actually like a putter that I used for putting and throwing. And I, I used to putt polecats. So polecat gang, yeah, this is a gem. How much money would it take to buy that disc or is that? This I have is, a question. I think this is in that realm of like, it would take a pretty absurd offer. Like I would, we're talking four figures at least. I'm thinking seven figures. Seven figures, I'm in. <laughs> sign, if somebody wants to give me seven, sign it up. That's good, but. Next up is the this S-Line FD. It's a Jackal stamped. Um, this was actually the very first Discmania disc I ever bought, which kind of got me hooked on Discmania and kind of helped guide me in a direction which eventually got me sponsored and traveling and then was able to become a touring pro. So um, big thanks to them for taking a taking a, sh a chance on me and making it happen. I also got probably one of the craziest aces ever at Creekside in Utah. My buddy Sperry and Gumby, Chris Telesbo was there. I just took a double bogey on a par three and I was just kind of frustrated. So I just took a really high line over the trees and it was clean the whole way and just kind of fell into the basket. It was, it was pretty sweet, big high turnover that just uh, decided to stall its way in, it was sweet. But it actually got lost in Twin Falls, but came back. This actually uh, made it into Tina's bag for a little bit. So it's, got, it's had a lot of love. It's time is done. It's, it's uh, just a disc I want to keep in my collection for forever. Shout out Utah, shout out Creekside. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was whole, was it on there? Hole 14 at Creekside. It's okay. the one that plays back to the creek edge. It was on yep. the creek's edge back there. Okay. And I went over the trees onto this sea line PD2. This is actually kind of cool because I lost this the very first time I went to the memorial. And I didn't see it until last year. My very first memorial was like almost a full season before I actually went out on tour. I think it might have been earlier that season, or it was a half a season. So um, went out to the Memorial, unsponsored player, just went out and played. I missed the cut by a stroke, and in the final round, I didn't count my score upright. So use me as an example, count your scorecard upright. I, I am very good at counting my scorecard up because of this, and this is kind of a memory of that. But this is the first run PD2s, sea line, some of the best flying discs that came out of the end of a factory for sure. I know a lot of the Discmania heads will probably agree that these PD2s were super sweet. So if you are watching this and I forgot your name, you reached out and said you had this disc, I cannot thank you enough because it's super cool to get something like this back that has a lot, has more special meaning than I thought it did because it's from my first big tournament I ever played and it helped me understand that I well, you know could make it on on tour even though I didn't make the cut but I was there my score my play was good enough to make the cut uh, I just happened to you know make a little mistake math is hard next disc this is a special one simply because this is uh, something that Tina did for me but this was actually really like the first time I was on a disc and she just did this small run for me 
of putter pants with you. You don't know, that is a old nickname that I used to have. Tina helped make these discs happen. She worked with Disc Mania on making these. This is a D-Line P2. This is one of the double stamps that they had. It was mainly just one stamp on there. Looks clean. Uh, yeah, but my homies used to always talk about having our putter pants on when we were having a good putting day. And uh, thank you, Tina. For real, this is super cool. And uh, I'm glad that I still have one as a reminder of, you know, how far I have come in the sport that you know, somebody just believing in me like Tina did was able to blossom into, you know, having discs that have my name on, name on them uh, across many companies, which is, is pretty rad. So, this is actually the hot dog felon. So, I felt like this is one, if anybody remembers the hot dog bandit, Big Germ was running around putting hot dogs on people's discs, but not telling anybody. Uh, him and Nate Sexton had this whole master plan. So this was the very first disc that we know of that was hit and Germ got me and played me like a fool. So very fun. Also has the big Germ stamp on it. That was done a long time before the, the hot dog itself, but it was actually one of the best felons uh, I had and I had to keep it just because of the hot dog, but also just to remember and uh, you know, had some inspiration on the spice. Hot dog felon. Germ, you're such a big dummy. I love you, man. Now, first disc with uh, with Dynamic was the Lucid X Felon. This is from the first batch. There, were, Well, the first batch was uh, some blues and pinks. So this was the second batch later that year, but this was the stamp. The Eric Oakley kind of looking like a bar stamp. It's really clean. These came out great. This is one of five that had a white with black. And I think my parents and Jordan Castro had the one of two that were was the white stamp on a white disc. And they look super clean. So this was a big moment. You know, seeing your name on a disc that the company wanted to, to back you up was, was really cool. So definitely, this is a great run of the Lucex Felon as well. So, bomb. On to the next chapter, you know, you're seeing like that's I think the coolest part is you're seeing all the different things and now we're on to the infinite chapter. The, you know, the best things are, are coming and so I have to go with this Pathfinder simply because when I saw this disc, I saw the stamp, I saw how I felt it and I started talking with Aaron of ThoughtSpace. I knew that that, that needed to happen. That's why we have the sick jerseys, why we have uh, amazing Pathfinders coming out, but this was the disc that said, like kind of convinced me that this is where you should be. You should be working with this company. And um, I just gained more and more confidence with it. And it made me happier to be, to, to be in that open bag situation. I was already loving a bunch of the infinite stuff, but the, you know, having the TSA stuff and, you know, led to me uh, jamming on the Votum and the Mantra and the, now the Construct and definitely many more. So this is still in my bag. Uh, I, I use this one for, you know, Heiser flips, some turnovers, and, you know, this is, it complements my Eric Oakley Ethos Pathfinder from this year super well. So I picked that one up when I first went out to Infinite, which was really cool. So continuing down the timeline, we got the Metal Flake Color Glow Exodus. This was actually kind of like the first disc outside of like that initial shield stamp that we did for Infinite. But this was like the first disc. They were like, hey, let's collaborate. We have these Exodus, do you want them? And I was already jamming on the Exodus. I had a blank uh, blank one that I still bag today. And I uh, took uh, inspiration off of one of the stock stamps that had the rocket leaving uh, the planet. And now we have, you know, with the asteroid, this was a cool collaboration and really highlighted the three foil design, which is uh, just again, hyped me up so much on my deal with Infinite. Really cool stuff. Crazy story about this is this exact run, I was like one of the first people who got to like pick out which disc. Yeah. So I have like the one unicorn yeah. disc out of like that whole batch. I'll have to show it to you. And so I was like, okay. And I saw like the one like yeah. kind of oh, funky yeah. one. Yep. You see the one that's a, just a different color, you're like, that's a winner. That's a winner. You always have to look through all the colors. And I asked them, I was like, can I take this one? And they were like, dude. Come on, great disc. I have two of these in my bag, so good. I know I've had a lot of people asking for them and we definitely want to have a run that flies very similar to that. So Infinite is always making good things happen. So these are two that are, are definitely super special, the Dynasty. So I was a huge fan of the CD2 in my Discmania days and the Dynasty was, uh, you know, uh, a deal that was made from Infinite and Innova to help get a disc that was super similar um, and feels basically the same and flies so identical. So big part about this, this stamp is 
this was the inspiration for the rest of the stamps that we're doing a part of the story series. So expect to see a lot um, on the alpaca was the introduction of our main character. Uh, other runs of the dynasty like the Metal Flake Color Glow actually has a, um, a subtle hint to the uh, main antagonist. Uh, big thanks to Raven Klein for helping with that stamp. And then uh, on the Ethos Pathfinder, you can see the same Shinobi looking good. Um, and we have a bunch more stamps coming. Super, super cool. The Kotari plays into the stamp. The Zone plays into this whole series. So if you're interested to having one of this from this whole story arc, this was the originator. And I was thinking about doing a different disc, but why wouldn't I do a disc that I made? I collaborated with Clash. We designed the spice. This is something special. You're not, not everybody gets to help have, you know, have their hand in how does it feel? How does it fly? What, what speed are we going for? You know, all the little nuances to the disc. Um, I got to be a part of every single bit of it. And I, I definitely, you know, big thanks to, to Randy and the entire crew at Clash Discs uh, for helping make this happen and uh, expect to see a lot more amazing content on the Spice coming up soon and cool runs and uh, there will be a story inspired Spice stamp. Be on the lookout. Thank you Clash and thank you Infinite and thank you everybody. Thought Space, you name it, it's been awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see more of people's collections so Comment below whose collection you want to see next. Check the Infinite team, find out who you want to see. Connor's going to be on it, it's going to be sweet. That's, that stack right there is worth an endless amount of money because he wouldn't even want to give them away. I so couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> Dude, this has, my, this has my old home phone number on it <laughs> from when I was in like high school. It's crazy, I, I, it is through the years and how I used to change, I changed my stamp, I had my PJ number, this one's got Tina's stuff on there. Eric Oakley on the back, that one's brand new. Now I just hit with a little EO. I've, you know, I, 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 this is going through time. It's cool, it's cool. So stay tuned, and if you have a collection too, let me know, hit me up. Uh, I'll have my email in the, in the description. So hit me up, whether it's, you have like the biggest collection in the world or the tallest stack of discs in the world, I don't care. Something cool, show and- it, uh, Show it off. And show it off, and we'll if I'm in the area, we'll do it. And uh, I don't know, maybe they've got like the most firebirds, or I don't know, something. Love Let it. me know. Subscribe, do all the things, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>